Sir David, Sir Siyuan, ladies and gentlemen, I'm most grateful to you, Sir David, and Sir Siyuan, for your kind words of welcome. To return to Hong Kong as governor is a great privilege and a great honor. At the same time, I am all too conscious of the sad event which led to my appointment, the sudden and tragic death of Sir Edward Yud. All of us who were in Hong Kong at the time of Sir Edward's funeral were deeply moved to see the genuine affection and respect in which he was held by the people of Hong Kong. As I take over his responsibilities, I have in mind his example of selfless devotion to Hong Kong. I shall strive to build on the foundations that he has laid. On his arrival five years ago, Sir Edward Yude spoke with confidence of finding a solution to the vital question of the future of Hong Kong. Now, that future is clear. It is defined in a historic agreement which sets out in detail the long-term future of Hong Kong. Both the British government and the government of the People's Republic of China are firmly and fully committed to the implementation of that agreement. In the short time since the joint declaration was signed, much work has been done to give it practical effect. I have no doubt, given the manifest goodwill and commitment of both the Chinese and the British governments, that this vital process of implementation will continue to make steady progress. Hong Kong has changed dramatically in the short space of five and a half years since I last lived here. Now, it has a new dimension and an added importance. It is a great center of international trade, finance, and commerce, and a gateway to China, where once there were fields, hills, or sea, now there are new towns. Great as the development has been in the last decade, much remains to be done. Development cannot stand still. That of Hong Kong has not and will not. The work which is going on to build the Hong Kong of tomorrow is all around us. In the days and weeks ahead, I shall make a point of seeing for myself all that is being done and planned. I shall also do all I can to ensure that this remarkable progress continues and that all members of our community share the fruits of our success. Hong Kong's prosperity depends on its ability to produce goods that people want and to sell them in world markets. We must continue to provide an environment which will encourage investment and initiative. We must maintain a framework of sound administration backed by clear and enforceable law. We must maintain the pace of investment in the infrastructure so as to keep the wheels of Hong Kong turning. And we must keep Hong Kong abreast of technological advance so that we can maintain our competitiveness in foreign markets. At the same time, we must also meet the needs and aspirations of the individual members of our community. We must continue to expand and improve our public housing, our educational system, and our medical and social welfare services. We must think of the young 
the elderly and the sick and those who cannot look after themselves. And we must do all we can to preserve and enhance the environment in which we live. The structure of government and the organization of any administration must remain responsive to the needs of society. It is in response to these needs that Hong Kong's unique system has been molded and developed. The enlarged Legislative Council has become an important focus for debate and discussion. The district boards have become an established part of government at a local level. And now, two municipal councils perform a very important and necessary role in every aspect of urban administration. This year, we shall be reviewing the role and function of these organs of government and their various components. These are serious issues with far-reaching consequences. We must approach them calmly and with common sense. If there is to be change, it should be prudent and gradual. It must not disrupt the steady progress we have been making, nor the stability which we prize. There are many other issues of great complexity and far-reaching significance which we shall have to face in the years ahead. In dealing with these, I know how much I shall value the advice and guidance of the Executive Council, of the Legislative Council, and of the many boards and committees which play such an important role in our community. And I have great confidence in the experience and efficiency of the administration which I shall now lead. Challenging times lie ahead of us, but Hong Kong has shown time and again that it has the will and determination to overcome difficulties and to respond to challenge and to change. My wife and I are proud to join you here in Hong Kong. We feel we're coming back among friends. We dedicate ourselves to working in partnership with you for the well-being and future of Hong Kong and its people.